God, praise God. Welcome to the second part of Nightline this Tuesday night. We had a great time the first hour, and I hope all of you got to watch it. But let me remind you, if you have any prayer requests or you want to talk to a counselor or you just want to find out anything, call them. They're out there now waiting on you, and they want to talk with you. And, and if you don't know Jesus, talk to them. They can tell you all about it and everything you need to know so that you can become part of the family. Amen. Praise God. Okay, and what's the scripture again? Okay, the scripture is for, from 1 Corinthians 10, 11, and it reads, Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. So he's talking about Israel and what happened to Israel. That's right. And it and shows the mistakes that, it, that they made. Well, that 40 years in the wilderness, they didn't have to stay there. They didn't really have to be there 40 exactly years. Exactly right. They could, have come, they could have really come from where they were in Egypt to where they were going. I think it was what they said in four and a half days. So that shows you that, uh, you know, they could have not had to go through any of that. Right. But because of their, like you all said earlier, because of their unbelief, because of their complaining and murmuring, and, and the, at, that, that what happened? They ended up right there. And disobeying God. That's right. And so that cost them their life. That's and right. And they didn't go into the promised told land. God them. You know, that's what he promised them. That's right. And that was, their, that was theirs and it was for them, you know. So yep. we come think about it. it so uh, it's a time for all of us, I think, to think. The whole family to think. All of us Christians that are alive right that's now right. and to realize what was the last end of that quote. What did it say? Upon, upon whom, whom the ends of the, of the world, world have come. come. Yes, right. So, you know, we're at the very end, and that's, that's really right. speaking to us. Okay, so, so that, that shows us that uh, we need to look at ourselves, examine ourselves, and we should do this regularly. I do that's it. Right. And, Absolutely. And, and I, I get repent before the every Lord. day. I get before the Lord and say, Lord, if there's anything in me that, that you know, that, folks, the reason I say this is it's serious. Time is short, and all of us probably have family members who aren't born again. You need to do just like Ann and I are doing now. We try to pray for them as much as we can, but also tell them and talk to them. Don't be afraid to talk to them. Let them know they need Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to our group that's singing with us tonight. They've been such a blessing unto him, and they're going to do the song, Oceans. <laughs> Yes. 
God. Thank you, Lord. Oceans unto him. And we appreciate that. That's great. Amen. Praise She's God. So anointed. Amen. I, and I like that kind of song. <laughs> it's beautiful. Amen. So, well, we want to welcome our guests We met in this half hour. And this is Pastor Anthony Shetley, right? That's right. Good to have That's you, right. Anthony. Now, they call you be. Anthony or Tony? They call me Anthony. Okay. <laughs> My mom make... would get on to you if she called me Tony. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can understand that. I know how mothers are. Yeah. <laughs> if we name them one thing, you call them what we name them. That's correct. <laughs> Amen. But it's good to have you. And we also see you got your son Daniel with you. And is he part of the pastorate? Oh, yeah. He's, oh, okay. he's a very uh, crucial part of the ministry team at Point of Life. Praise Amen. God. And, and we have another guest sitting down at the far end, Mike Bentley. Good to have him with us tonight. He's in the missions. And I pointed, let's see, the name of your church is uh, Point of Life. Point of Life Church. And so that's one of the things we was going to add. What kind of church is Point of Life? Well, Point of Life is a missionary church. Uh, that's the kind of church we're uh, trying to establish here. Um, my lifelong pastor, Pastor John Cody, uh, who pastored a church in Union. I went there my whole life. He's my lifelong pastor. I, I told him one time, I said, well, Pastor Cody, if, if I got anything wrong doctrinally, it's your fault. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> because he, uh, he was a great minister, and he, he was all about missions, all about serving. And when I came to the Lord, I was uh, 18 years old. And, you know, he was two or three generations, you know, ahead of me, but yet he was so inspiring, such a man of God, a, a great man to pattern your life after. Yeah. And I believe missions, being being hands-on, being a part of missions is is really what kept me with some, what I call stickability, yeah. you know, in the yeah. Lord and serving the Lord. So so when we felt like God had called us to, to plant this church, we wanted to follow that pattern, making a missionary church. Right. Well, I can understand that because that's the final thing that he left us to do. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's our job. We are to win souls and get the kingdom built, and, and then we can go home. I think that's the main main job it, it for the is. church. It is. That's what I've always felt like he left us here for. Why didn't he just get us born again and take us on to heaven? That's right. There was a reason he left us here, and that's the reason. He don't want anybody to go to hell, and he comes through man in order to get the person to believe to receive Jesus. Yeah, and what a, what a blessing it is that God chose to use us. That's right. You know, to represent him, and yeah. it's just a wonderful... You know, it's hard at times. It's challenging, especially a church plant. You know, we started this church with just our family. We right, really started yeah. on faith. And we've had a lot of times where, you know, in the flesh you can get discouraged. But it seems like at those times God just br bring the, brought his encouragement right on time, you know, and, and reminded us what a privilege it is. Because, you know, I've I seen a recent host on here. Uh, or excuse me, a recent a guest on this show, and he was talking about some real sad statistics, you know, about the church and yeah. its outreach. And uh, it is challenging. It is challenging in these last days, but what a great privilege we have. And I, going back to what you said, winning souls, that's the greatest yeah. greatest task that we have. And a new church plan is a great opportunity. Yeah. That's right. Uh, sure you know, is. to reach souls. That are, uh, that are lost. And that's how we want to build our church up, not necessarily shifting the saints, yeah. You know, from oh, one yeah. church right. to another, another. Right. But, yeah. but really going out in the community and reaching those who are lost and building up a new body yeah. of, right. of converts, you know, that were right. once at lost, like we can all say, hey, once I was lost, exactly. but now right. I'm found. Right. And uh, we, want, we want that to be the testimony and, uh, that, uh, of our people. And we are so thankful that God's chosen us. It's an honor that God's chosen us to represent Absolutely. Him in this Amen. community. Amen. I agree with that because we, any of us that know where we came from and honestly established in our hearts that that's what we were, we always, when we accept Jesus, it becomes more meaningful to us, I think. Yeah, sure. Because we realize he's the only one that could have brought us through it. Yeah, you know, when I got saved at 18, uh, I was, you know, not long out, out of high school. Yeah. And if you would have told me that, uh, first of all, that I would have been in church and saved or uh, but if I would have thought, wow, but if you had yeah. ever told me that I would have been a minister. And I remember a missionary said one time, said, you know, God chooses those who, who you would have never thought, you know, would uh, represent him in the ministry. And he said, he does that. So, you know, God can yeah. get the glory right. and somebody can say, hey, we know this guy, <laughs> that's right. that God has to be the one, you know. <laughs> that's right. Couldn't do it without him. Couldn't do it without exactly. him. That's for sure. Exactly. So, so the next thing is, uh, 
you are saying it's a mission church, so your values of your church are established on reaching out and taking missions, not only here, but everywhere. But everywhere. Yeah, um, again, we started just with our family and with faith and trust in the Lord, and God has opened up some doors in the community. Sure. Uh, Mr. Bentley that's with us tonight, he, uh, he, he's a great friend. Lord has given us a new friend in him. He's become a, a vital yeah. part of our church. He's been a blessing. We have had the opportunity to go. Uh, Volunteers of America uh, operates a, uh, an apartment complex in Duncan. It's called Duncan Village. And uh, Tia Carte, she uh, manages that facility. And uh, I think it was just a, a divine path crossing when he led us there. And she just opened the doors there to give us a great opportunity to go into that community and minister on site. We started what we call a Sunday school on Saturday. Uh -huh. And, you know, instead of expecting them to come to us, we wanted to take it to them. We built some relationships with those kids, and God has helped us now to kind of transition them now into the church. So we're growing uh, slowly, but we're growing with great strength that's in the that's Lord. Great. So that's great. My heart goes out to this young generation because we've got a generation that was not raised in the church like, you know, we were, I was. Most definitely. You know, uh, I remember when I was coming up, you know, everybody was not saved obviously oh, but, yeah. but he was kind of playing the church kind of had a home field advantage yes, everybody exactly believed right. in Christ they knew they might not be saved and need the Lord but we're in a generation now and you almost have to go back to apologetics exactly. you know, right. the convincing of this generation that Jesus is the Christ he's the only way that's right. So it is a challenge. That's what it's you see. Sad. Well, they took everything out of the schools. You know, when Madeline O'Hara came in there and they had to take the Bibles out and everything else, what, what have they got in church? I'm, I can remember so well, Anthony, in our church, little school out in the country outside of Charleston, I'm coming in every Wednesday we had a complete hour-long service in our church, I mean in our school. And uh, every week on that Wednesday, we would come into the auditorium and they'd have somebody read scripture and one or two of the older boys or girls would speak and the principal would always have prayer with us. We're and that was every time. Wednesday. We're and and, and I tell you, day. it meant so much to us. Yes. We never seen people shooting up with drugs and never saw anybody smoking pot. We, you know, it was just fun. We enjoyed school. Yeah, well. Besides the studies now, but I mean, we enjoy school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So tell us about your friend, and he has a testimony. Yes, Mr. Bentley, uh, I work with a, I'm a bivocational pastor, a small church, not able to support a pastor's salary. Yeah. Uh, a Cohen Financial Group, Michael Cohen and Eudine Cohen, a great friend of mine for over 20 years. And just a short story there, uh, I was doing some work and uh, was getting a little, little bit over my head, and I said, you know, I know this guy, a great friend of mine, I'm going to call and reach out to him and get some, get some counsel, some advice, some guidance. But anyhow, uh, long story short, he brought me in to, and gave me a job there. Great support of the ministry. Uh, very flexible, you know, understanding my obligations to the church. Anyway, he sponsored a uh, devotional uh, that we was able to purchase and put our name on it, make it a personal devotional. Yeah. And we just went out in the community and gave those away in uh, Greer Ministries. Great, great ministry there. They allowed us to offer those yeah. there. And Mr. Bentley... Got a hold of one of those uh, devotionals, and here he is. Well, Amen. good. We're so glad to have you with us tonight. It's good to be here. Real good to see y'all. So tell us a little bit about your testimony. Well, it started March of this year, and it started with a major sciatic attack. They did blood work, found I had to staff again, and I had two knees replaced for the second time this year. 11 hours of back surgery at oh the end of May. My. That finally got the sciatica gone. The first couple of weeks I was questioning God. I said, Lord, this thing is painful. The only way I could alleviate any of the pain was intravenous morphine. And oh. you, that's pretty heavy stuff. So two weeks, I, I finally realized, because I was just shaking all over, what was going on. The Lord wanted to draw me closer to him. And I said, Lord, but does it have to be this way? And he said, whose will? My will. And I ended up at different hospitals in the area, and I was ministering to the doctors, to the nurses. I led people to the Lord. I talked with the chaplains, all kinds of good things. The guy didn't put me in a hospital just for that. But when he was in there, he used me. And one thing I really feel about is, is the strength of evangelization. There's a lot of people out there that won't try to lead somebody to the Lord because they're scared, like Moses was. 
Well, there's always seed planting. And I can tell a quick story, all right? Yeah. Um, back in the late 1700s, before the Revolutionary War, there was a, an evangelist in western Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Indiana uh, named John Chapman. And he did a lot of seed planting. We know that the Bible says that uh, somebody plants, somebody waters, and God causes the growth. Well, this man's name, we know more uh, by Johnny Appleseed. Ah, uh -huh. He planted apple orchards, but he also planted the Word of God. Yep. Right. right. And if you, if you think about it, in the fifth chapter of Acts, when uh, Stephen was getting martyred, the Bible gives about two and a half pages to it, the entire story from Abraham all the way through, uh, the people that were getting ready to stone him heard it. And uh, they ended up stoning Stephen. And there was one man in the crowd that heard all this. His name was Saul. Yep. And he got very rejuvenated for persecuting the Christians. And then not long after that, the Damascus Road experience happened. Right. Well, there was seed being planted when Stephen told his story, and he ended up getting martyred. And it makes you think, is it all worth it? It sure is. Amen. That's and that's right. seed well, planting at its top. That's, that's exactly right. right. And that's what we need is seed planters. Exactly. If you can't lead somebody to the Lord or you don't feel qualified, talk to your pastor, but try to get some seed going. Just talk to somebody about whatever, and I guarantee you it will get to the point of we're talking about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That God. is so that's great. wonderful. Great. Mike, we're glad. And that's, what, that's what we're doing now. And exactly. He's planting the seed of this Amen. church. Exactly. That's right. God a blessing. And you got Daniel there to help you now. Oh, yes. Daniel's a, uh, well, I can let him tell you a little bit about his experience. He's, he's been through a lot with us. Our, good. our kids have really, uh, they've grown in the Lord, and we've grown closer as a family. Yeah, for sure. good. Go well, it was hard for me when we moved up here. I had to, uh, I had to leave my friends and family. But I made a new family. It's a church Amen. family. Amen. Amen. Yeah, praise Amen. the Lord. And I made new friends when we out That's when right. we made an outreach and reached kids. Amen. So That's great, Dad. Again, you keep at it. Again that we started just with our four people and we're we're here and we're growing. That's, That's, good. Good. <laughs> That's good, buddy. So when did you receive Jesus? Well, I don't really know right now. <laughs> you don't know. Uh, that's okay, Daniel. You know him, and he knows you. That's right. That's what cut. Listen, this young man here, you talk about gifts. He's just got a great a great heart, a great gift of love, I believe. And I really think God's going to use him. Amen. In a great way. Amen. So we'll agree with that. My other son, he's the one playing. I don't know what the... You call the, oh yeah! I don't know what you call the word box, but he's uh, that's Will. He's and I've got oh. two other sons. Uh, oh my God! <laughs> uh, I've got four sons. Is that right? Well, I wanted a I wanted a daughter, but you know, so that's the only reason I got four sons. But anyway, <laughs> after the fourth one, we've seen a we've seen a pattern setting. Yeah. But <laughs> but they are they're not actually in our church. They are they're older and on their own. But uh, we. Uh, Pardon me, uh, Brent. When you got four sons, you got to think a minute what they're doing. But Brent Shetley and Nicholas Shetley. So we got a, we, God's blessed us with a good family. Amen. And and really, uh, I'm so thankful y'all allowed us to come on the show. We just really want to ask this community. We've got a lot of good churches this, in this community. We're part of a, uh, a group of eight churches that worship together every fourth Sunday. That right. is great. Different denominations, different churches coming and. So we know there's a lot of great churches here doing a lot of great things. And we, we have recently just reached out to our family, our friends, and we just reach out to this community and ask them just to just lift us up in prayer that God will just anoint us and bless us Amen. and help us in these last right. days. As you yes. said earlier, I believe these are the last days and we want to reap a harvest for the Lord. That's what there are souls about. that need God. And that's there's exactly no doubt about that. And our society needs to be changed. And Amen. Jesus' love is the changer. That's, that's right. what does it. So it, well, you're such a blessing. You've been such a blessing. Thank you for coming tonight. Yep. And we're just so excited about your church. And your wife is so anointed. We've just enjoyed the music tonight, too. So we just bless you and bless your church. She's our music minister. Very good. <laughs> Thanks, God. So we just, if you get a chance, we'll meet you again. And That's right. Hallelujah. But, you know, you never know who you're going to run into. For all the years that Ann and I have been coming up here, you know, we recognize that we've met some wonderful people, worked with some great people, and met a lot of, a lot of them that have come a long way, and we thank God for them. And we're going to play, pray over all your prayer requests after we uh, Close out tonight. go off tonight. Because we we're going over 
to unto him, excuse me, to unto him again, and it's the last song, and it's going to be clean. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 